everyone, and welcome to episode 50 of the D-Hard House podcast. Episode 50. What? <laughs> My name's Alicia, and I'm coming to you from Texas. You can find me on other social media. Does YouTube count as social media? I mean, I'm on here being social with you. Whatever. You can find me on social media as uh, Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry and Read Knit Run on Instagram. I also have a shop on Etsy called D Hard House Creations, and the shop has its own Instagram account at D Hard House. Yeah. So it's episode 50, which is crazy and awesome. It's December something. 10th. It's December 10th. So we're well into the month of December. And uh, I haven't seen you guys in a long time, it feels like. I don't even know how long. I'm not going to look it up because I don't want to know the specifics. I am drinking coffee. This is my second cup. And if I'm drinking my second cup of coffee, you know it's still pretty early in the morning. In fact, it's about 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> I usually wake up at 5 o'clock. I teach for a living and sometimes I end up teaching uh, the first class of the day which starts at 8 a.m. In fact that happens pretty often. We are officially on winter break so I don't have to keep waking up early but you know how it is when you get into a routine that you're in the routine. So, <laughs> yes. So I woke up at five this morning, was ready by eight, like usual, and uh, decided to sit down and do this podcast today. My lighting is not the best. Um, I look ghostly white on my screen right now. and <laughs> It's a little unsettling, but anyway, <laughs> we're going to work with it. Uh, it is like 30 something degrees Fahrenheit outside. We actually have um, frosty grass outside. Uh, like I said, I'm in Texas, so it's not known for getting piles of snow, <laughs> but it is cold and it has been, actually a couple days ago it rained and then got down below freezing that night and yeah. I'm from Michigan uh, and I actually went to school up in the upper peninsula of Michigan for university and uh, I'm used to the cold and I really miss the snow that comes with it because it's kind of like if you're gonna be cold at least give me some snow to play in and enjoy the sight of and I don't have that. It did kind of snow on Saturday. Kind of. But you know, as, as soon as it hit the ground, it melted. So anyway, it's cold. I'm inside. I totally had a hat on and all kinds of things, but I'm inside with the heater on and I was burning up. So <laughs> anyway, so, um, let me get some announcements out of the way before I get into all the things. So, um, some administrative stuff here. Um, first of all, you guys, I have a shop on Etsy. It's called D Hard House Creations. And I want to put this first off. Uh, I'm having a sale in the shop. Everything that's in the shop, bags, yarn, whatever, is 20% off all the way through December 26th. So the day after Christmas. So go get your stuff. Go buy all the yarn and all the bags and things because I have, let's see, which way do I move? I have a lot of bags and things that I want to go into the homes of knitters for you guys to enjoy. And them sitting on the shelf over here isn't doing anyone any good. So uh, as my holiday gift to all of you, everything in the shop is 20% off. That includes self-striping yarn, speckled yarn, all the bags. So go get all your goodies, um, Christmas gifts and, and whatnot, and um, clean out my shop. Clean out my shop for the new year. Okay. There is no coupon code needed for that 20% off discount. It is applied to every item in the shop. 
Um, when you go look at the shop on Etsy, it should just have um, the original price with a slash through it and then the new price next to it. I'm pretty sure. So um, you don't have to worry about putting in a code or anything that that discount is automatically applied. Okay, so um, I am running several knit alongs <laughs> and make alongs and things in the Ravelry group. So we have a group on Ravelry uh, called D Hard House Podcast, and it's where I'm hosting knit alongs and I post uh, show notes. So in the show notes, I put links to any um, projects that I talk about, uh, links to videos that I talk about, etc. So uh, if you're not a member of the, of the droop, of the group, go ahead and join. Uh, I have a couple of year-long make-alongs that are going to be ending December 31st, and those two are about making blankets. And that's a make-along because any craft is allowed. It's just about finishing a blanket. So we have the Cozy Couch make-along, which is all about adult-sized blankets, and the Cozy Crib make-along, which is all about baby blankets. Uh, and I did finish one baby blanket this year, and that's it so far. <laughs> so far, that's not going to change. We have 21 days left of December. There's no way I'm going to be able to finish an adult size blanket. Anyway, <laughs> I also have the All the Shawls of Fall knit along running and that ends December 22nd. And that is about knitting or crocheting shawls or scarves or cowls or anything for your neck. Okay, uh, any yarn, any pattern, any size, doesn't matter. Everything counts. Whips, new casts on, doesn't matter. Just finish it before December 22nd, on or before December 22nd, and then post a picture in the finished objects thread in the Ravelry group. Now you can get bonus entries if you use one of my patterns. You get an extra entry, which means you post your picture an extra time. Uh, or if you use any of my hand-dyed yarn, D Hard House Creations, uh, that also gets you an extra entry, so you just post your picture in extra time. Um, because every uh, picture that is posted uh, gets you an entry into a drawing at the end of the knit along where I'm giving away prizes. <laughs> okay. Whew. That's it, right? That's it. Okay. Um... Did that cover all the announcements? Yes, it does. So, you guys, it's been a while. Let me give you just a brief overview. Oh, this is coffee. Okay, so I have sugar-free peppermint mocha flavored creamer in here, and it's amazing. Um... A lot of times the sugar-free creamer just tastes like oil to me, which is not what I want to taste when I'm drinking my coffee. Uh, but the Coffee Mate brand tastes so much better than the others. I don't know why, but anyway. I'm enjoying some peppermint mocha coffee this morning. And yeah, so... um. Like I said, we're on winter break, so Thursday was the last day of finals. Really, it was Friday, but almost no one has tests on Friday. Um, yeah, so I'm officially on break. Does that mean that I'm sitting around knitting all day long? Not really. <laughs> More knitting is done during the break than during a normal work month, <laughs> but... <laughs> No, in fact, I have to go to work today uh, to meet with some colleagues to get our classes set up online with our homework and everything because um, we're working together and coordinating and it's a whole big deal. <laughs> so, anyway, happy to be getting it done um, earlier rather than later because the week before classes is already stressful enough. No one needs that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so finals are over, all the stress that comes with that. I'm telling you guys, these past, like, three weeks have been, and I don't know if I told this to you guys, I definitely said to my students, 
as soon as um, Thanksgiving break happens, um, and here in the States, Thanksgiving is uh, in the last part of November, uh, we have Thanksgiving break, one more week of classes, final exams, and then winter break. And it's just boom, 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 boom. And it's super stressful because the students are all working on, you know, their big projects and big papers or big exams um, to take, prepare, and turn in. And <laughs> the teachers are stressed out because <laughs> we have all of our paperwork to turn in and things to plan and student questions to answer and trying to get all this stuff done. So these past three weeks have been extremely stressful and they always are and it's over and I can breathe and it's all good <laughs> anyway um and okay I went around the house to gather up all the things I've been working on since I saw you guys last time and the pile is smaller than I thought it was going to be I thought I had gotten a whole slew of things finished and I did not <laughs> By the way, this is a knitting, crocheting, crafty podcast, if you couldn't tell by my background. <laughs> okay. So, let me talk about um, some new items um, in the shop, okay? And I guess I kind of have a couple of shops. I'm holding on to my hat <laughs> that I was wearing earlier and then decided uh, it's too warm in here to wear a hat. Uh, this is one of my designs. This is called the 11th Place Hat. And it's got this nice texture pattern on it. I knit this out of, this is Knit Picks City Tweed DK Weight Yarn. And the color is Plum. And this yarn is amazing. Uh, I knit this hat last year and I have another one in like a mustard color. Same pattern, same yarn. Uh, and they're so awesome. So yeah, I just love the color and I love the texture pattern. There we go. And I love the tweed. If you've ever used this yarn, you know it's delectable. Um, and one of the fluffy pom-poms that has a snap so you can remove it to put it in the wash so you just sew one end of the snap onto the hat and that way this can go in the wash however you're going to wash it uh, without ruining the pom-pom and you know as some of us like to do we can also um switch out pom-poms if you really want <laughs> but anyway I was wearing this earlier, but it's too hot to keep that on. So it will sit over here on the spinning wheel. <laughs> okay, so um, let me talk about D Hard House Creations on Etsy because I have been dyeing some yarn, you guys, and it's amazing. And I wanted to start a new project, but I said you can't, you can't start using the yarn until you show everyone. So I'm going to show you the yarn and then probably later today or tomorrow I will cast on a new project using that yarn. <laughs> so, um, yes, I have some new colorways. I love making new colorways to go in the shop. And uh, yeah, they're gorgeous. So uh, they're not listed as a set, but I'm going to use um, all five of these colors together in one project. Um, but they're great standalone colors. So I went with like a holiday theme without being overly Christmas in your face. So, uh, this, uh, tonal red, uh, is called cranberries and my mother loves cranberry sauce. And so, uh, she's, I believe the only one in our family that actually eats it. <laughs> Um, I haven't tried it since I was a little kid and I like cranberry juice, so I should give it another go. Uh, but anyway, cranberries, um, there are bags and bags of cranberries in the store around this time of year. And so, yes, it's just this gorgeous, gorgeous tonal red with a little bit of black and some white because that's how cranberries look. So yes, I love this one. 
Yes, wear it as a beard, Alicia, because that is attractive. Okay. <laughs> then um, I love, and who doesn't, because it's like the fattiest drink in the world, eggnog. Yeah. And eggnog with a little bit of whiskey in it, also not too bad. <laughs> so uh, this is eggnog. I'm trying to hold it up so you can't see the, my face through the middle because then the camera can focus. So this is eggnog, and I love my eggnog. Come on, you can focus a little better than that. I love my eggnog with a bit of nutmeg sprinkled on top. So it's got this really nice uh, creamy yellow eggnog color base with uh, some brown speckles on it to represent the nutmeg that is sprinkled on top. So. And in fact, I decided to put some nutmeg in my cereal this morning and it was really good. Uh, and then we have evergreen because uh, we put up a Christmas tree every year. Uh, and my husband and I usually get a real Christmas tree, but we decided not to this year because <laughs> We're not hosting Christmas. We're going to everyone else's place for Christmas. So we just put up our fake tree so we still can enjoy it. But anyway, this is evergreen and on camera it is showing up more teal than green, which is really disappointing. So maybe I'll put in a picture. Um, it's this beautiful tonal uh, green color and um, I just love it because it kind of looks like um, the tree has a little bit of snow on it and whatnot. Okay, then we have to go with cranberries, right? Um, I am from, like I said, I'm from Michigan and went to school in the Upper Peninsula and my sister actually went to school up there with me and we lived together and uh, we would go blueberry picking in the fall. We found this really great blueberry patch and we would go blueberry picking, and so, uh, <laughs> so many blueberries, it would carry us through the winter, and so we'd make blueberry pancakes and whatnot. So this color is called blueberries, because it reminds me of going blueberry picking with my sister, and we had so much fun. So it has blues and purples in it, and it's just delectable. And again, it's not coming up super well on the camera right here, so, Maybe I have some pictures scrolling along, but see when I hold it back further, it's a little better. Anyway, yeah, blueberries. And then last but not least, you can't celebrate the holidays without chocolate. <laughs> so this is called dark chocolate. This is this gorgeous dark brown and uh, yeah. It's amazing. So it's slightly tonal, uh, dark brown color. So all three as a set. Well, it's not posted as a set in the shop. They're posted separately, but they go really well together. So yeah, and I did post pictures as well on the uh, D Hart House Instagram account. Um, so you can find pictures there as well. And yeah, these are 20% off, you guys. Uh, you can get them as minis, which I dyed up. Um, I dyed up minis to try out new colorways. And um, you can also get them in full skein, because I know how to scale things up as a math person. Uh, yeah. And then I have one more, which is kind of separate from that group right there. Um, this one, oh my gosh, I can't wait to use, is called Winter is Coming, because Michael and I have been watching Game of Thrones, and these blues and browns, holy cow, so yeah, it is so pretty, and blowing out on camera, so yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. But winter is coming with dark chocolate. Okay, and then, so I guess I have been doing things. 
Okay, so that's enough about Dear Heart House Creations on Etsy. I also have some new designs that are going up today. So they're already on Ravelry if you're watching this episode. Um, in my Ravelry shop, Ravelry design. Anyway, Dear Heart House Designs on Ravelry. I have two new sock patterns. They're going up today. And I'm saying going up right now because I haven't done it yet. But I'm going to right after I'm done recording. So, they're already up, you guys. New sock patterns. So, I have two of them I wanted to release together because they sort of match <laughs> and coordinate. Um, so, this sock is called Trill, right? Yeah. This one is called Trill, T-R-I-L-L. -L. It has a faux cable running down the middle of the front of the sock surrounded by some ribbing so it's even down um, the leg in the foot it still has this beautiful stretch to it and even when it stretches out the pattern still looks amazing so I have the cable detail running all the way up into the ribbing section of the sock which I think looks super cool uh, and then we have plain stockinette everywhere else okay so from the back of the sock, it just looks super simple. And then on the front, bam, design. Okay. So I knit this out of Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering, which is a super sturdy yarn for socks. It feels awesome, and the stitch definition is amazing. Um, and for those of you who have shopped nit, nit picks before, you know it's extremely affordable yarn, especially when you get it on sale. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can't remember this colorway name to save my life, uh, but it's green with uh, some brown in there. So these are called Trill. Uh, so I participate, I've done this two years in a row now, in... Um, a Christmas show at uh, the Methodist Church in town, and, which is super fun and I love doing it. Uh, so the band director at our college uh, organizes this Christmas show at the church and uh, he has invited me to play two years in a row to do things like suspended cymbal, <laughs> crash cymbal. <laughs> Um, and the drums, uh, we do play Little Drummer Boy and we march in with the, the marching snare drums and it's super fun. Anyway, so I was inspired um, getting reacquainted with music uh, by all the terminology that comes with playing music. And this year I was, they, he rearranged the orchestra so instead of being behind the um, trumpets, we were behind the flutes. <laughs> So I got to hear lots of trill by the flutes. Um, and a trill is when you go back and forth quickly between two notes. Um, and on flute, you know, they just do 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 do. Uh, so I got to hear lots of trills. And this makes me think of that with this folk cable, just going back and forth between those notes super quickly. And I love this being a faux cable because you don't actually need a cable needle for it. Uh, so these, I probably knit up in like two or three days. No joke. Now, I do knit a shorter sock because I like mine to be a little shorter. Uh, so that does contribute to it. But super fast. Super fast. And it's only a four row repeat, which means it's easy to memorize. So there's trill. And then the accompanying sock pattern is vibrato. <laughs> so uh, these I knit for Michael, my husband. So the trill socks are for me and vibrato are for Michael. Uh, and vibrato is where you hold the same note, but you fluctuate um, your airflow. So uh, it gets louder and softer and louder and softer. Uh, but you keep the same note. So this is a true cable, but the going back and forth uh, reminded me of vibrato. So again, there's a cable running down the middle front of the sock. 
surrounded by some rib. So there's a little stretch to it, even down on the foot and everything. Now this one is a true cable, so I do recommend having a cable needle. Uh, I am <laughs> not brave enough to just let those stitches hang out while I work the cable. I need a cable needle because dropping stitches is the worst. So yeah, it's super fun. Uh, this is a little more than a four row repeat. Uh, I can't remember how many rows. I want to say 12, but that doesn't sound right. Maybe it's 10. Anyway, I <laughs> use the chart. Uh, this one is written with a chart. Um, and yeah, so the cable runs up into the ribbing, plain stockinette on the back. I did put a little bit of a detail on the back of the leg, uh, just to give it a little bit of interest there. A uh, short row heel. You could really insert any heel that you like or prefer. I also knit these shorter because Michael has found that he likes shorter socks as well, which is awesome because <laughs> it means I get projects done a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, so we have vibrato and trill inspired by uh, the Christmas program that I participated in. Um, two years running now. <laughs> so I posted another pattern. It's already up and it's free. And I, I will have another one coming here soon that will also be free. Uh, so I have been wanting to knit Christmas stockings for myself and my family since I was a small child learning how to crochet. Um, my grandmother crocheted stockings for uh, everyone in the family uh, before I was born. I think before any of the grandkids were born. And so mom and dad had these really nice elaborate crocheted stockings. And I'd always wanted to do that too. Thank you grandma for inspiring me. So I finally done it. I finally <laughs> Okay, not for everyone in the family, because it hasn't been that long, <laughs> but I've got two stockings to show you. So the first one, um, oh my gosh, I love it so much. This is a color work knit um, stocking, and honestly, I'm really glad that I know so much about sock knitting, because in case you didn't know, a stocking is a sock. <laughs> Oh my god. So, um, yes, I have posted this pattern for free. This is called the Tenenbaum stocking. Um, and it's just this gorgeous color work tree pattern. And it just goes around the whole stocking here. So I used worsted weight yarn. Uh, this is Red Heart. So where's the weight acrylic? This is uh, some green color I had in my stash. I've lost the tag. I think it's hunter green, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> but it's a great um, dark green color. And then white. I know it's white. Uh, and it's totally blowing out on the camera. But anyway, um, yeah, I just did a short row heel in the solid green and then a rounded toe solid green. Uh, the major difference between a Christmas stocking and a true sock, you do not knit a long foot for a stocking. <laughs> I mean, you can, but I didn't. I opted for a very short foot and a tall leg, uh, which is the opposite of how we like to actually wear them with an actual long foot size foot and a short leg. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I just repeated this tree pattern around and around and around and offset it uh, every other row. And uh, yeah, so one stocking done. I did crochet a loop at the top. Excuse me. On this pattern, I started out by crocheting the loop and then cast on, which was fine. On the second stocking, I forgot to crochet first. So I added the loop after I finished it. I can't tell the difference. Uh, but yeah, I just did a simple chain uh, to crochet a loop on here. Oh, God. 
gosh, I love it so much. So uh, this is the Tenenbaum stocking. Uh, it's posted on Ravelry for free. I do include um, the color work chart and very simple instructions, uh, partially because while I was making this, I didn't take very good notes. So um, I just mentioned um, I cast on 60 stitches for this one. I used US size seven needles, two by two ribbing for 10 rounds. Uh, a single round in knit. Now this one I did pick up um, after several oopsie daisies. Uh, before starting the color work, when going from ribbing to stockinette, do a round, at least one round of just plain knit stitches in your main color. So do the 10 rounds of ribbing, then one round of just plain stockinette in your main color, then start the chart. And I did, I do like to go from the cuff down. Chart, 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 chart for however long you want it to be. Um, short row heel, whatever short row heel you want. Um, then work, continue the chart, and then rounded toe. Kitchener stitch um, the remaining stitches together, weave in your ends, and you're good to go. Uh, so I made a stocking to go with this. Um, so this stocking is. I'm going to let Michael choose which one he likes, but this one's my favorite. <laughs> so I also made one um, out of the the same yarn, but a different color. Uh, and this is a snowflake pattern. Oh, yeah. So we've got green for the trees and then blue for the snowflakes. So this one I'm going to uh, make a pretty chart for and also get the pattern up. In the next couple days and I think I'm gonna call this one the Schnee stocking. Um, Schnee is German for snow if I remember correctly. <laughs> I did take uh, two semesters of German uh, when I was in university which is now like 10 years ago. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> so same kind of thing where it's it's the same snowflake just repeated around the whole stocking offset um you know alternately uh the same short row heel same rounded toe um the only difference is because of the width of the snowflake uh i had to cast on fewer stitches uh so this is 56 stitches while this one is 60. But um, with my gauge and everything, they're pretty close in size. I mean, four stitches off is not a lot, um, as opposed to adding 10 stitches. So um, anyway, the chart is 14 stitches across. Um, but yeah, cast on 56 stitches. Again, worsted weight yarn, US size seven needles. Um, do two by two rib for 10 rounds. Then do a single row of plain knit in your main color then start the chart <laughs> so chart um for however long you want the leg to be short row heel in the main color continue in the chart for however long you want <laughs> do the rounded toe um and like i said on this one i came back and put the crochet loop on afterward uh i did not leave a long enough tail in the cast on to just use that yarn. So I did have to attach a new piece, uh, which isn't so terrible. So anyway, I love them. They look so awesome in our living room. Yeah. So uh, like I said, Tenenbaum is already up on Ravelry. It's free. It already has a bunch of downloads. Schnee is coming soon. Um, and they're just super simple, super quick. I knit each of these. Um, it was two days a piece. And yes, that's all <laughs> two days. I'm talking like literally I sat on my butt on the couch and watched TV and did nothing but knit on these uh, and get up to eat and go to the bathroom. So yeah, they were pretty quick, but I definitely committed to them. And yeah, they look so cool. That white is blowing out like crazy on the camera, but yeah, I love them. I'm so happy, um, and I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, I do like stockings that have the 
um, you know, like the snowflakes at the top and then the trees at the bottom and then reindeer on the foot and then that's all cool and everything, but I just wanted like all trees, all snowflake, <laughs> just boom. There's no, I didn't put, you know, our names on them, obviously. Um, so I might add, I might add that later, like our first initials on here, but I don't, I don't know. I like them the way they are. So that's cool. Okay. All right. That's it for my pattern stuff. So let's talk about other things I've been knitting. <laughs> Let me talk about what I'm wearing because you guys, I knit this sweater in like a month, which is insane. That is crazy. And I love it. Okay. So this is, uh, the readjust here. Okay. So this is the wind down, uh, sweater by drops design it is a free pattern on Ravelry. It is written for DK weight yarn, which is what I used. And I did some modifications to this pattern because it needed it for me. So first of all, this detail, decide which way I'm going to go here. <laughs> this detail here. Awesome. It looks so nice. That's probably why I look like a ghost because I'm wearing black. I just figured it out. Okay. <laughs> super easy chart, super easy design. What a great detail to add something to the sweater. And the same pattern is on the back, which I guess I'll just show you real quickly. Yeah, cool, on both sides. So um, there is no necessarily front or back to the sweater. There was no, no short rows on the back of the neck or anything. So, you know, you can flip it however you want. Um, however, the, the beginning of round was right in the middle of the front or back panel. So I'm wearing that in the back. Not that you can really tell, but anyway. So it's got this really great detail here. You can't tell in any of the pictures posted on Ravelry, but there is a, a lace detail that runs down. Um, it starts down here in the armpit and continues down um, the sleeve here on the underside, which I'm gonna try really hard to show. Okay, so there you can see it. Yeah. It's not, it's not a, as wide of a panel as this. It's like four stitches. Um, but yeah, this little tiny detail, which like I said, is not in any of the pictures on Ravelry, not from the, not from drops design and not from any of the other people who have knit it. And maybe they just decided not to do this detail. Um, but I went for it. So I'm like super showing off my armpit to you guys. <laughs> but yeah, the two lace panels um, come in here and then you just start this when you start the sleeve. I like it. I think it's cool. Just one of those little details that unfortunately I feel like no one will really notice it except me because I made it. But that's cool. Whatever. Uh, so I went with black because... Um, I wear a lot of black at work. I did make the sleeves a little bit shorter than they called for in the pattern. They end right after my elbow. Um, but that's just because I'm always pulling up my sleeves at work all the time. And so I thought, why knit? Now in the pattern, it goes to like here, like a three quarter length sleeve. Uh, but still, why knit all that extra length if I'm just going to push it up anyway? So I just knit it there. Um, and then stand up the body. Maybe, maybe we can get there. I'm also wearing black pants. See, I wear a lot of black. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it hits me in a good, good spot. It is rolling you guys, and that bothers me. <sighs> really does. 
Oh yeah, show off your belly. So, um, anyway, it looks super nice. I love it, except for the rolling bottom edge. Now, caveat, you guys, I have not washed and blocked this yet. Okay, it is knit out of acrylic yarn, so it's not like washing and blocking is gonna make a huge difference. But, um, yeah, if you've been watching this podcast, you know that I had a huge problem. Look at that, with this bottom edge rolling. Swing my hips. Okay. So, in the pattern, it's a garter edge where you do like four rounds of garter and then bind off. The problem is that the edge super rolls when you do that. So, what I did is I went down a needle size and did a two by two rib for um, five rounds instead. So it's not like a big band of ribbing, it's still just a small amount. Now on the sleeves, no rolling, no problem. It's awesome, okay? Uh, it's great, it just stays where it's supposed to stay and it's awesome. However, on the bottom of the sweater, those five rounds of ribbing, beep, every time. So I just need to wet the thing and pin it down and hopefully get that bottom edge to just stay because, <sighs> I don't like the bottom edge rolling up and it just looks it looks sloppy and the whole point of this sweater was to make a nice presentable professional looking sweater to wear to work and with the bottom rolly edge it doesn't look that way so um I'm hoping I can just fix that with some blocking and I will keep you guys updated but yes, I finished it and I wanted to show it off and give you guys an update on the rolly edges. The sleeves, no problem, which makes me think that I can fix the bottom edge. I just need to figure it out. <laughs> I have another project that you have seen before that's also finished. This is um, a gift knit for someone in my family. <laughs> So this is the third pair of gift socks, and I think the final pair, because it's December 10th, you guys. Christmas is two weeks away, which is crazy. Oh my god, it's two weeks away. Just saying that out loud makes everything way real. Okay, so, uh, yep. Finished socks with a nice tall leg. Uh, so I did two by two ribbing. Uh, all the way around the leg, down the top of the foot, with stockinette on the bottom, short row heel, standard toe, completely finished, ends woven in. They have been sitting on these blockers for at least a week now, um, just dry blocking. And the yarn is Premier Yarns, and you're going to get a whole face full of Deborah Norville here. Here. Okay, so Premier Yarns, and the color is chili. Yes. So this is 50% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Rayon, and 25% Nylon. Yeah, and it's this self-striping speckly stuff. Get my face out of there so it can actually focus. Maybe. I'm recording on the laptop again. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Good job. All right. So, yeah, you can see self striping speckly stuff, which honestly, when I bought the yarn, I didn't know it was going to stripe. I just thought it was speckled. But I like it. So these are for someone in my family. I'm not going to say who because I don't know who all watches the podcast. But yes, three pairs of socks I have knit to give away. Which is awesome. So yes. Um, and then last night um, we were watching uh, Game of Thrones and I have been wanting to make these mittens for, I don't know, when, 
when did the pattern come out? Because it's got to be at least two years that it's been in my pattern library. Definitely at least a year, but I want to say two years. Anyway, they're color work mittens. And color work is one of those things that, in my mind, is is a mountain. <laughs> Not to say it's a bad thing. Just to get color work right, you need skills. <laughs> um, good tension and... Um, and experience and those are things you just kind of get over time and definitely when I started out knitting I had crappy tension even just knitting in one color one strand of yarn you know the stitches were wonky and didn't look even and so I knew that before I could tackle color work I needed to tackle um, getting good tension with just one strand of yarn and also understanding patterns and, uh, like shaping and increases and, and yarn overs and all that good stuff. And I've spent quite a while now knitting socks, some sweaters, um, etc. And I feel comfortable, you know, doing color work. And anyway, I've been wanting to knit these mittens for the longest time. It's called Gray Eyed, and I'll put a picture up here. Um, it has owls on it. And my sister loves owls. And I've been wanting to make these mittens for her. Now, I don't know if they're her style, if she's gonna, if she would like wearing them. Um, so I'm knitting them, and if, if she likes them, then they will be given to her. And if she doesn't, I will wear them. <laughs> so, so I cast this on last night. Now, in the pattern, um, it, it says that she used Knit Picks Palette yarn, which I have a lot of. So I grabbed some from my stash. In fact, up here, these two cubbies are full of Knit Picks palette, which I love. It's so awesome. So the gray, oh my god, I can't remember the name of the gray, but the blue is called Whirlpool. So I'm using these two. And yeah, they're not like super, super contrasty, but I think that's okay. So, um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry, by the way. So, I have, I started the first mitten last night. This is how far I got. And then it got too dark and I was too tired to <laughs> properly read the chart, so I set it down. <laughs> but, yeah, this is my first time doing corrugated rib, which looks amazing. <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, so in corrugated ribbing you do all the knits in one color and the pearls in another color. And it's not actually like stretchy like ribbing, which is fine. Uh, it looks awesome. And then I've just started the um, leaf pattern here. And yeah, it, the colors are not super contrasty, which means the pattern is gonna be kind of subtle, which I'm now thinking kind of sucks, but <laughs> whatever. Here's the back of the mitten. I can see it better in person than we can on camera. It's just because of my lighting. But anyway. Anyway. So I started out this, so corrugated ribbing was in the beginning. So I held one color in one hand, the other color in the other hand. Which made it a lot easier. Then I started the pattern chart and I was holding both colors in my left hand because I knit um, Continental now. And it was a pain because this yarn is very toothy. It's not a super wash wool, um, which makes it great for color work and mittens and all that good stuff. So I switched to the one color in each hand and I think my tension is a lot better because when I was first starting out, I mean, I have some stitches that are a lot bigger than the other stitches. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. Come on, please. If it can't focus, I'll put in a picture. There we go. Okay. Wow. So this stitch right here, that blue stitch is a lot bigger. And here too, like, they just don't look even. So up towards the top, these last few rounds here, you can see my tension got a little bit better. 
So, yeah, it's just one of those things that I'm still working on, but I'm excited. I love color work. So they are a little tight, which is good because you want them to fit. But my sister does have slightly larger hands than I have, so I'm a little worried that these won't really fit her. But, like I said, um, they could always be for me. <laughs> uh, or my niece. She has smaller hands than both of us. So they could just go to her. Anyway. I'm liking it. I'm kind of wishing that I went with different colors, but <laughs> whatever. So yeah, that is um, a project that I just started. I really don't know that I can get it done in time for Christmas, but maybe like while we're driving there, <laughs> that's horrible. That is just horrible. Okay, so last knitting thing I wanna talk about is my blanket, my Buffalo check blanket, which I started this year in June or July? One of those months. <laughs> so I started the Cozy Couch Make Along at the beginning of the year. I was working on a completely different mitered square blanket, which by the way already has 200 squares on it. Totally dropped that one and went with this one. I'm so crazy. Anyway, I put a bunch of squares on it since I, um, since last time. So <laughs> I have hit the um, 12 by 12, so 144 squares, and am now working on the next row out, or round, I guess. So I'm knitting this blanket from the center out. It's a mitered square blanket, and I'm only using three colors, and I'm patterning them to be like, um, like plaid, like buffalo check. So... It's large enough now to cover up while I work on it. <laughs> yep. It's awesome. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks so cool. I love that the um, miter detail creates this X shape in the middle. It just looks really cool. So I've decided um, when knitting this blanket so I had a progress keeper marking the middle for me. This thing is so big, I can't find it. <laughs> so I've decided, okay, what I'm going to do is I finished off the 12 by 12. There's dog hair all over this thing. I finished off the 12 by 12 square. I'm now on the next round out. And you have to start in the middle um, to angle them away. So what I did is I put one square on each of the four sides. So I would know that <laughs> these are the things I'm still working on. Because what I was doing was one whole side, and then I'd lay it down and go, oh my god, what side do I need to work on next? Like, So I'd have to find the middle and then count the squares out, and the ones that were smaller meant I still had to do a row over there. Which is fine. It's not a big deal. But it was just annoying me. So, yeah. I put a square on each side um, and have been building out from there. So, I have five on this side. <laughs> I have two on this side. I have just the one on this side <laughs> and three on this side. In fact, I have some ends to weave in. I put this, this square on last night. We were finishing up an episode, but it was too late for me to keep doing the color work mittens. <laughs> Let me pick up something that I can see better. <laughs> and so, yeah. So this is making it a lot easier to see, um, 
what I still need to work on for this whole round. And so I think that's what I'm going to do from here on out is that, you know, I'll finish off this round and then I'll do one, 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 and then fill it in, finish off the round and just keep doing it that way until I get the size that I want. And I'm thinking that I want it to be 24 squares by 24 squares, which is a lot. But we'll see. The beauty of knitting this from the center out is that I really can stop whenever I want. And if I decide in the future, I could always add to it, which is kind of cool too. And it's now to a size where it is big enough to uh, cover me. So uh, yeah, whenever I get bored with it or <laughs> decide I'm finished, I can really just stop and add later if I want. So yeah, I'm loving it. Um, this is worsted weight acrylic yarn. Um, the white is red heart in the color white. The dark gray right here is red heart and the color is charcoal. And the light gray, which where are my hands going? The light gray is Karen yarn in soft gray mix which the light gray is the one that's used the most um, since it's in every row. But anyway, I love this blanket. It looks really good um, with our decor and it's really awesome and I love working on it. Uh, I really like the scrappy mitered square blanket, but what was slowing me down was picking out the colors. So what I would do is lay the blanket out and I was trying not to repeat any one color uh, in a row or in a column, which meant I had to lay the blanket out every single time, plan out the whole row, and then I could just grab, you know, each color I'd laid out for the row. But every time I had to, you know, lay the whole thing out and, and try to pick out colors, and it just became an ordeal that I didn't want to deal with and so I stopped working on it. I'm gonna pick it back up at some point but I'm just not I'm not inspired I'm not motivated so I'm not gonna work on it and that's what I've decided. So that covers all the crafty content um looking around my craft room like is there anything else? I am going to be, and I need to do this soon, sewing some, uh, some Christmas presents and, um, they're going to be some special kind of bags for some gentlemen in my family. Um, I got the fabric, um, the other day from the store and I just need to sit down and do it my desk over there with the sewing machine on it is covered in stuff that I need to put away so that I can actually use my sewing machine and uh, so I'm going to be doing that at some point so hopefully I'll have some bags to share with you that are super cool and so happy crafting happy knitting happy holidays and uh, I will see you guys soon bye